Hey everyone, Liam Motley here, and today I just wanted to make a quick video, even though this is the holiday season, and I hope you're all having a great time with your family and friends, if that's what you celebrate. But I wanted to make a uh, sort of looking forward video into 2025 for those of you with an AI automation agency who want to really be on the front foot. And I'm gonna be sharing what I have seen significant shifts in the market on my end um, at Morningside AI and what I suspect to be one of the driving forces of change and uh, really where everything is going with this space um, within 2025 and beyond. And so I wanted to make this quick bit just breaking down what we're seeing on our end and how you guys can start to position your agencies to benefit from what I think is gonna be the big shift in the market in 2025. So um, this goes right back to what I've talked about a lot on this channel um, earlier, earlier this year um, about the technology adoption life cycle and how technology is typically adopted throughout a, a market. All right, so you guys have seen it. If you haven't already watched that video, I highly recommend you check that out. It's kind of like mandatory stuff for making money in emerging tech spaces. So I'll put a video link up here or in the description or somewhere. Um, and I recommend you watch that first because it's when I break down um, the dynamics of the market and how technology is adopted by businesses or by any, anyone really um, in different stages. So you have the innovators, you have the early adopters, you have the early majority, the late majority, and then the laggards. But basically, technology is adopted in different phases by different groups of people who have different inclinations towards the technology, right? Maybe they're an early adopter and they see, they like to take a bit of a gamble or risk on new technology, or they're in the early majority, which are people that need to see a bit more proof and evidence before they can make a jump and take the investment. Um, but all of this is based around us trying to sell AI systems and services and solutions to businesses. And you're gonna get a spread of business owners who fall into different categories, right? And how this relates to the big shift we're gonna see next year is that for the most part, we have been focused over the past two years, since I really talked about this model and, and it's gained so much traction. In the past two years, it's been primarily focused on the implementation section. And this is because we've been primarily dealing with uh, early adopters and by implementation, I mean implementing AI into their businesses, like actually building systems for them and saying this is going to make some kind of meaningful difference in your business. So that's implementation and that's what we've really been focused on. It's can you get these early adopters or business owners who are interested in AI and basically profit off of their interest and willingness to spend money on this on this new technology that excites them that they want to get ahead with and that's what the ai automation agency model up to this point is largely being based around which is there's a bunch of early adopters who want to spend some money we can market ourselves through personal branding through youtube through if you're doing like cold outbound as well basically get yourself in front of these people or try to find those who are interested in it and offer your services and say hey look if there's something that you'd like to build um, we can do it for you or even identify a more specific offer that you sell um, that you've really dialed in and you've found, hey, this is a great offer to sell. And you're reaching out to businesses and trying to say, hey, I can do this for you. And then providing a bit more proof. So that's more so dealing with the early majority and trying to sell to people who aren't necessarily implementation or, or ready for AI systems or aware enough about the problem and, and, or about the benefits they provide. The key is that the implementation layer that we've been so focused on is actually what we have realized at Morningside AI uh, over the past say three to six months as we've been working with our, our consulting division that we've set up here in New Zealand, is that the implementation step is actually kind of way, way down the, the pipeline. And it's really a, a late stage way of capturing value in the AI space as an agency. And you've got a lot that happens before that. And while it has been good to start off initially and just deal with the implementation uh, and selling implementation for businesses who are ready for it and are, and are eager for it. Sure, that's been a great way for us to get our agency off the ground and as for many of you guys as well. Uh, but we see that there's a much bigger opportunity going into 2025 and a slightly different model. And I mean, I, if you go right back to when I first started talking about the AI automation agency model, it was aimed at small to medium sized businesses and helping them to implement and integrate AI into their business. And it was always really leaning towards you are gonna be there in the same way that social media marketing agencies were the people who helped businesses to move online and start, uh, not necessarily move online, not like set up their website, but I mean, they do that sometimes, but move into social media marketing and start, to, start being their guide to getting into the uh, digital marketing era. And that's what the AI automation agency model is ultimately going to move towards uh, in the long run, but next year is when I really see that shift taking place and that you're gonna see us moving more towards, or the agencies who really succeed, moving more towards being the AI transformation partner for businesses. And whether that's being general, which may be quite difficult, or niching down to saying, hey, I, I'm the AI transformation partner for, and then I'll explain exactly what that means on, a, on the implementation and on a like operational standpoint in a second. 
I'm saying we are we help plumbing businesses transition into the AI age. It's basically the the offer that you're you're, you're helping them out with, right? Or that you're, pre you're presenting to them. And so the way this would look is we see that morning side AI. We're starting to identify these real key. key areas uh, that your agency can uh, can focus on and can provide value to businesses and this really allows you to tap into a much larger chunk of that market of, of business owners right the technology adoption life, life cycle we've got these big chunks of the business owner population in in your given niche who are not ready for ai implementation yet but this strategy that i'm talking about right now essentially allows you to tap into pretty much the entire uh, spectrum and everyone in the market because you're taking a different approach than going straight from implementation right so this strategy this ai transformation partner kind of offer starts with basic education right so that's taking businesses we've found in our consulting business that we've started here that you go to some of these companies and they just know absolutely nothing and even at this point, they're still at the starting blocks. And this is in New Zealand. We are not on the most, on the front foot necessarily with AI here. In the States, it might be a little bit uh, more common for businesses to be making moves. But I'd say on the most part, if you go and start knocking on doors around your, your city, if you're living in the States, if you live anywhere, and you start knocking on doors of businesses and asking them about what do you know about AI and uh, what benefits does it present? What are the risks? Um, have you thought about implementing it? You're asking all these basic questions and the business owner just be like, mate, I have no clue what you're talking about. And uh, I'm not really that interested in it. Uh, sure, I'd like to make more money and spend less, um, but I don't know what this AI stuff is. So step one is that there's a huge opportunity for just basic education. And there's the whole population of business owners need to be brought up to speed on it, just like they did with what is a website and why the hell should I put it in my, why, why the fuck would I spend money on getting a, getting a website set up, right? This, we have the same opportunity now. And yes, we've been focused so much on implementation, but you go back like two steps, I'll, I'll explain the rest in a second. And the first thing is just what is the technology? What, what, could, what does it actually do? Uh, what are the risks with it? And like, what are, what, what's the difficulties of me getting to the point where I actually get some value out of it? So we see there as, as being a big opportunity if you're really looking to scale into 2025 and beyond so that you can tap into, say, your entire niche, not just the plumbers who are, and I'm using plumbing as an example, but not just the plumbing businesses who are watching my videos or are kind of really, really techy and, and they're ready for implementation. They're aware of what AI is which would be obviously a very small portion of the, the plumber business owner population. But by positioning your business in a, in, a, in a way that says, look, we can actually do the education section so we can start to convert that 97% of people who are not interested and start to move them down the, the, the pipeline towards being implementation ready. That is step one. So step one would be education. Okay, can you go, I use plumbing as an example again, but this is for any niche. This is when being niche down is probably gonna be the significant advantage because it's gonna vary from industry to industry, right? Um, we're saying we help XYZ types of businesses to transition into the AI age. There's this different wording for that. I mean, that's probably not what we would ultimately go for for the, the offer that we're working on at Morningside AI, but that's the, the main concept of it, right? So you've got education first, what is the tech? And then the next step after that is once they've got that foundational understanding, it's like, okay, now let's go into use case identification. And this is what we see as the kind of consulting portion and where we've learned from our own consulting team that there's this really key need of use case identification with the businesses and a team that can go through and do a really rapid and efficient AI audit. And that we see as the second layer of, of this, this new kind of AI transformation offer. We have educated them. Okay, now we can actually have a proper productive discussion about what this stuff can do for your business. So you've understood the, the foundations. Now the next layer on top of that is what can it actually do for your business? Let's run through some of the systems you have right now. Let's identify any of the low hanging fruit. Let's do a breakdown of, okay, well, these big opportunities, the, the, uh, the difficulty value matrix, which I've talked about on the channel here before. Again, I'll link a video to it in the description or somewhere here. I've, a lot of the stuff I've already talked about before, um, but I know we often need to be reminded uh, more than we need to be. Well, how, how does that go? We often need, what is that saying? We need to be, Reminded more than we need to be told? Oh no. We need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. So again, I'm just reminding you of the things that I've, I've talked about here before, but basically walking through use case identification with them. Where do these things that we've discovered and, and identified within your business and where do they fall on the difficulty value matrix? Like how are there some low hanging fruit, some, some quick wins? 
that are not very difficult to implement, but are hugely valuable? And what are the longer term projects that we can look at that are going to be high value, but also high difficulty and take time? And so being able to make a bit of a roadmap or a timeline on how they can start to tick those off, then you are ready for the implementation section. And then we get to what we've all kind of been familiar with, with this AI automation agency, which is actually using our development teams to build the systems for them and then go through the, the cycles of iteration to get them performing well, and then managing that system moving forward. So I guess implementation would be one, and then you've even got another step after that, which is ongoing optimization and maintenance. So, so technically there's four parts of that, right? The education, what is the stuff, consulting, and use case identification, how can this actually help my business? How does it apply to my business? Implementation, okay, let's actually build this now. And then the ongoing maintenance. So there's four different ways that you can create value and sell things to them, right? And that can either be sold as a package, where it's like, okay, this is gonna be $15,000 for me to, we, do, we help plumbers to move from here to here. We have this complete offer and we're gonna walk you through step by step by step. Or you can start to like kind of make that more piecemeal and you can say, hey, we have this free education offer and then you can advertise directly to plumbers. You can go to you can go to plumbing conventions. Again, plumbing as the example. Um, and then you can say, okay, well, I'm going to do the education. I'll actually give the education away for free, and build some trust with these plumbers, and say I am the go-to guy for AI and your plumbing business. And then you can sell them on the use case identification. You say, oh, actually, we've got a two thousand dollar package for um, use case identification. You'll work with our consultants directly. We'll run through a whole process and identify the best ways that you can use AI within your business. And if you are smart about it, you do stay niche down because so you can just keep doing. It's based like how how different can one plumbing business be from the other? You actually aren't having to reinvent the wheel each time with this use case identification. There may be some differences. But for the most part, it'd be like booking systems or, you know, like optimizing schedules and, and stuff like that. So the use case identification package could become pretty lucrative as well. And then you have the team as well to sell it. And whether you are, this is when it becomes actually really good for people who are non-technical, because if you get to the point where I'm like, you're really good at selling, you're, you might be good at getting on camera or writing and you can really market yourself or you've always been very much on the sales or, or marketing side of, of a business, or that's just the way you lean kind of naturally. You can do your thing. You can become, hey, I'm gonna be the educator and I'm gonna have this team of consultants. And then when it comes to implementation, I'm not gonna have my own team of devs. I'm gonna be passing off to dev partners. Say you go into my free community or if you're part of my accelerator, you can network with the, the guys who are really doing numbers in there. And you find capable development partners who don't wanna do the marketing, who don't wanna do all the selling crap that they don't, there's never really part of their MO and stuff that they wanna do as a developer. And then you can just pass them off and say, hey, look, we'll take 20% of any deals we send you and these are gonna be our implementation partners. And that way you get to flex this business model to what you need. And if you're a development partner, you can find people who are doing the strategy and doing the educating, and you get to just get the leads that you want. And if you think, often if it's custom development, your margins may be, I don't know, 50 or 60%. And so if you are a marketing sales person who's gonna be doing the education and priming them for that implementation step, the actual real value creation and how sort of you get hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings and you're passing it off and getting 15 to 20 percent i mean like that's you're almost there if a project runs runs long and you end up going uh over over um the expected timeline you could only end up profiting 20 percent and you've had to have the whole dev team and do all of the management yourself so it can actually be pretty like if you're just getting 20 percent pure profit for just passing it off it's not actually that much worse. You're making like 50, like half the profit that a full dev agency would be making, but with 0% of the headache that comes with running the whole dev. So that's not to say I highly recommend you should just go and sell it and then pass it off. That's just a strategy that you can adopt. And my point here with this whole video is that I think this is where, this is where we see it going. This is where we are moving our agency and I'm gonna update you more on that next year. But we see this as really the, uh, the opportunity to scale hard into different industries. Because once you have that offer, you've got, I have education for them, I have a great uh, team of consultants that I can, or a consulting strategy at least, like a system where you can get one of your team on and they go on and they walk through this, 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 this. Great, we've got that. That's a, you can sell that as a package or you can just have it as part of this whole package as well. But then you get, you unlock that technology adoption life cycle, you unlock a significant chunk of the market where now you can market to any business owner because you have something for every stage of the readiness. It's like, hey, okay, let's do a quick questionnaire. Do you know about AI and, and what are things? Yeah, yeah, I've got a pretty good idea. Okay, great, well, I, do you know where it can best help your business? Oh no, yeah, I mean, that's really where we're stuck, we're not sure. Okay, great, well, we've got a consulting package. We can get you straight onto that. And then after that, we've got some great partners that we can help you uh, connect with, or we can actually build it for yourself. 
And then there's another opportunity that comes off the back of that that we are eyeing up particularly at Morningside AI and that's if you did have a group of dev partners, say you were doing this, make a package that's say fifteen or twenty thousand dollars for this AI transformation. That's end to end. You've taken them from basic education. You've even got maybe a layer of staff education in there as well, where it's like upskilling them as well, consulting, implementation, maintenance, etc. And then if you're really smart, you can hand off all of the kind of lower ticket, smaller stuff to your dev agencies that you identify with them, your partners. And then if there's one really interesting thing that you're like, wow. I think we could build something around that and actually start to sell it to other businesses within that niche. Then you say, we're gonna put our dev team on this one. It might be like a really complex sales system, but you know it's gonna drive a ton of value or we've had things that have popped up recently in the consulting we do around say like a computer vision inventory management system. And it's like, well, if we build that, we could actually then start to sell that to other businesses in that niche. And you start to build up a bit of a portfolio of these uh, software solutions, AI software solutions that are massively useful and you've got a great case study to then go and sell it on to other people. So that's how you can start to build a bit of a software portfolio as well. So I, I, I don't wanna go much deeper on that because I'll, I'll take the wind out of my sails for next year and what, what we're doing at Morningside. But I thought I'd put you guys onto a bit of game there as to where I see the market moving. And I think this is something you should all be considering if you maybe might have a good thing going with the implementation already and you've got a, a good a good amount of momentum but looking further ahead and if you really want to unlock a bigger chunk of the market now that we are getting a little bit more competition there's more people trying to come after this that's not to say we're late i still think we are so so bloody early to this when you when you again when you do the knock on the door test and there's like no businesses using it um it shows that we are still so early uh, but this is something you should look to be doing hey how can i start to unlock and tap into more of this untapped market. And it's not just those early adopters who are really ready for this technology already, but I wanna start accessing that bigger part of the early majority and even the late majority by being able to give them a much more beginner friendly thing and say, look, hey, AI is really gonna appreciate the industry. I know it can seem quite scary and daunting, but if you give me, I've got this free program or this free little course that's gonna walk you through, or we've got a paid course, whatever it is, that's gonna take them through to the stage where they're ready for use case identification. And you gotta start thinking about it in these different layers of, of value that you can provide. So that's my little message for 2015. Um, I'm super excited for this and I can't wait to see some of you take this kind of offer and just absolutely crush it and, and dominate niches uh, either within your within your country or internationally as well. I'm just so excited because there's so much potential left. Like we have just, just got started. When you're seeing that we're now developing the model to this point and the, all these companies are still starting at the, they're still at the starting blocks. So um, I hope you guys are excited for 2025. There's so much opportunity and so much to be gained um, here monetarily, but also just in like self-actualization and I, I like building something, building a business in the space and feeling like you've achieved something, feeling like you're proud of yourself. And I think that is as much of a part of entrepreneurship as just the money. Like once you make the money, you then need to find some other kind of purpose. So yeah, I hope you guys have had a excellent 2025, uh, 2024, sorry. And uh, I'm really rooting for all of you to have an even better year in 2025. So it should be my last video for the year, actually. Um, but yeah, more on this to come in 2025. But this is me for the year, signing out, and I'll see you next year.